Welcome design students. In this video I'm going to show you how to uh, translate the character forward with his walk cycle. We had finished making him walk in place but now we're going to make him walk from point A to point B and this is what's called a progressive walk cycle. Now the hard part about this is getting him to move forward at the right speed so that his feet do not slide back and forth. The way we're actually making him move is by only animating the global controller. If I open up the um, curve editor, or the graph editor as it is called in Maya, you will see that the selected global controller is just moving in the z-axis at a constant rate from point A to point B. If I select all controllers and open up the graph editor, you will see that we have our walk cycle basically repeating on into infinity, even after he stops walking. Notice that if I select one of the leg controllers, you will see that it really only has the three keyframes that we set when we did the walk cycle. However, it does repeat as many frames as I want to add to the timeline, it will just keep going for that many frames. I don't really have to do anything except add frames to the timeline. And you'll be surprised at how easy that is to do. So here's the rabbit where we left off in the last video. He's just walking in place for 24 frames. And the only reason this looks like it goes on forever is because this just loops from beginning to end. If I add more frames, then he's going to stop at the 24th frame. But if we're going to have him move from point A to point B, we need him to keep walking. So the first thing we need to do is to make him keep walking on into infinity for as many frames as we want to add to the timeline. Now this is extremely easy to do. All we need to do is select all our controllers. Remember we created this selection set and open the graph editor. And you will see our walk cycle right here. Now we need to hold down control and deselect the global controller because we don't want to add that to what we're doing right now. So make sure you deselect the global controller. And then we need to turn on what's called infinity view. So we're going to go to view, infinity, and make sure that's checked. Mine is. And then we need to zoom out a little bit just so you can see what's happening. And then we need to select all the keyframes and go to Curves, Pre-Infinity, Cycle with Offset, and you can see what that does. And then we're going to go to Curves, Post-Infinity, Cycle with Offset, and that just goes on into infinity. Now, he will continue to walk for as many frames as are in the timeline. I told you that was easy. Now in order to make him move forward, we need to translate this global controller forward at the right rate. To figure out that rate, we need to do a little math. So let's switch to the left view so we can see the grid, and we're going to use the grid to calculate this rate. Now I'm going to make sure I have um, auto key turned off. I have it turned on. I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to switch to the channel box because I need to see these values here. And then I'm going to deselect all the controllers by just clicking over here any old where on anything because I just want to select the global controller right now. And I'm also going to expand the legs because I might want to select the IK change just to help me calculate. So I'm going to um, get the global controller and I'm going to move it forward so that this IK chain that's visible right here lines up with the origin right here. This little line right here. And of course it helps to be in wireframe wire view when you're doing this. Now the reason I put it on the origin here is because I only want to work with positive numbers. I don't want to get confused by negative numbers. 
So I'm going to select this IK chain, the uh, right IK chain, this one, whichever one it is that's lined up with the origin. And then I want to look at the grid here. And as I look at the grid, I can see that my distance between these two steps here, between here and here, is almost exactly two grid uh, squares, which is two centimeters. And I also know that he's going to take, that he snapped back, that doesn't matter. He's going to take one step every 12 frames. So let's select the global controller. And it is aligned with the origin. And its position is zero. And if we know we move two units in 12 steps, then in 200 frames, oh, sorry, I don't know what this keyframe is here, but I'm going to select it and delete it. So I'm going to make sure I have auto key turned on and go to frame 200. And so, like I said, if we know that in 12 frames we travel two units, then in 200 frames we should be able to calculate how far we travel by dividing 200 by 12. And that's 16.7 units in the Z direction. Make sure you have auto key turned on. And of course he disappears because he walked away. So let's see what that looks like. Now the reason he slides in place there a little bit is because of the interpolation of the curve. So let's fix that in the curve editor. Go to Windows, Graph Editor, and we need to select the Z translation and select that keyframe. And we need to make that a straight line. We need to do the same for that one. And so now he should not slide in place anymore. All right, now let's see what that looks like in the perspective view. I think that's pretty acceptable. Now, if we want him to move forward more, we can't drag this keyframe out. We need to go to frame 400 or add more frames to the timeline. I would work in increments of 100. And we need to say, all right, we went 16.7 units in 200 frames. So in another 200 frames, we should be at 16.7 times 2, which is 33.4. And that should move him further out. And let's zoom out and see what that looks like. Now I think that's pretty acceptable, and so I would call that finished. However, we still need to do something to the curve editor because if we open up the graph editor, I keep calling it the curve editor, you can see that it added some uh, ease out interpolation here. So we need to select that and make it straight. Make sure this one is straight, it is, and we really don't need this one anymore, so we can just select it and delete it. And now we should have a constant walk speed from frame 0 to 100. Whoops. Now if we frame the shot properly, we can have him walking in and out of the frame. Especially if we turn on the resolution gate. So try to frame the shot so that he walks in and out of the frame. I'm not going to make you watch me try to do that, but um, if you are able to do that, that would be great. And um, in the next video, we're going to show you how to make him do something else. And I'll see you then.